This videotape was taken by undercover investigators in Miami on June 9th, showing a group of men who look like other tourists flying into Miami from Bimini. But federal investigators using this crude videotape surveillance recorded these scenes of men considered to be top members of various mafia families. According to police, the group met in Bimini and returned to Miami as part of a top-level mob meeting to discuss organized crime activities and territories. Anthony Accardo is considered to be the Don or boss of the Chicago family. With him, Jack Cerrone a part-time Dade County resident and a man who lawmen call a professional killer in the Chicago family. Also present, Anthony Jacalone, a boss of the Detroit mob. Jacalone lives in Miami Beach. He was one of many questioned about the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa, but refused to talk to federal authorities. Jacalone faces a three-year sentence for income tax evasion. As far as police know, there was nothing illegal about this meeting. But police did record one curious observation, an apparent argument between Accardo and Jock alone. The boss of the Chicago mob, Accardo, threw his arms up in apparent disgust while talking with Jock alone, a boss of the Detroit mob. Federal investigators won't speculate what the meeting was about, but they say it definitely wasn't a pleasure trip. Shortly after these pictures were taken, Accardo suffered a heart attack and is reportedly recovering at his Chicago home. Organized crime specialists say this was just one of many high-level meetings taking place in Miami involving members of the major mafia families in the country. Al Sunshine, Channel 4 News. Santos Traficanti, the man who heads the underworld of Florida, was one of 16 persons arrested today on labor racketeering charges. Traficanti, a Tampa resident, was named in a federal indictment as part of a criminal conspiracy in a kickback scheme involving over $2 million in union pension funds. Also indicted was Anthony Accardo, who's boss of the Chicago Crime Syndicate. The investigation into the Laborers Union of North America and its locals goes back to 1973. The defendants are charged with receiving portions of union funds paid out as health care and insurance benefits. The kickbacks came from firms that were referred to the union by the defendants. One such company was identified in the indictment as North Dade's Dental and Vision Care Centers. And the indictment alleges that uh, the Dental Vision Care Centers were a, a conduit organization through which kickback monies were, were paid and received. Who is the ultimate loser in this case? Well, the ultimate loser is are the laborers' union members uh, who pay more uh, for, uh, for benefits than they should. Union officers arrested here today include John Giordello, president of Palm Beach's Local 767, and Salvatore Tricario, business agent of that same local. The former lawyer of the Union Southeast District was also arrested this morning, Seymour Gopman. The federal indictment also names former Florida Insurance Commissioner Thomas O'Malley as being controlled by the defendants in deciding certain matters in favor of their own insurance company, Farmers National. When Channel 4 newsman Lee Manella tried to talk with union representatives in Palm Beach this morning, he was thrown out of their offices. Can you leave, please? Who's standing in your hall, okay? Can you leave? The international president of the laborers union in Chicago was also arrested in the kickback conspiracy. Santos Traficanti was released from custody this afternoon after posting a $125,000 bond following a U.S. magistrate's hearing. The U.S. Department of Justice is expected to seek the removal from office of any of the union officials convicted of labor racketeering. Al Sunshine, Channel 4 News. In 1977, Traficante was called before a congressional committee investigating the assassination of President Kennedy. When asked questions by members of the committee, Traficante refused to answer. Traficante, now 67 years old, is currently facing racketeering charges in a kickback scheme involving the International Laborers Union. Government prosecutors say he is among 16 men who tampered with union pension and medical plans, taking $2 million in kickbacks. Today, in an unusual Saturday session, Traficante's lawyers told U.S. District Judge James Kehoe that their client is too ill to stand trial. 
Judge Kehoe heard testimony from a government-appointed doctor who examined Traficante for about an hour at his home in Tampa. Dr. Joel Mann said Traficante's health is so bad he could not undergo a trial that's expected to last several months. What's Mr. Traficante's condition? He's sick. How sick is he? He's very sick. What's exactly what's wrong with him? Well, he's got end-stage renal disease, uh, arteriosclerotic heart disease with angina, uh, diabetes, and what's called organic brain syndrome is a combination of all of those plus the medication he's taking. Judge Kehoe ruled that Traficante should stand trial at a later date with four co-defendants. Today's decision does not mean the end of the government's case. On Monday, 11 defendants will stand trial without Santo Traficante. In fact, whether the aging mafia boss will ever stand trial remains uncertain. Elliot Rodriguez, Channel 4 News. Since Tampa organized crime figure Santo Traficante was excused from today's trial because of bad health, the center of attention was this man, reputed Chicago crime boss Anthony Accardo. Once reported to be the former bodyguard of Al Capone, Accardo and 10 others went on trial on racketeering charges for allegedly bilking the International Laborers Union out of some $2 million. If convicted, Accardo and the others could face up to 20 years in jail. With the help of the Laborers' Union President, Angelo Fosco, Accardo was charged with dividing the insurance business of the union into spheres of influence, with millions of dollars in kickbacks being made to union and crime figures. <laughs> comments on the trial, sir? No comment. Other union officials indicted include Salvatore Tricario of Fort Lauderdale and Alfred Pallotta and James Corporelli of the Chicago Laborers' Union office. How's this thing all going to come out the war? Oh, huh? Clean as a whistle. You're going to clean as a whistle. Some 276 prospective jurors were brought in for jury selection. They were asked about their feelings about unions and what they knew about the case. If the union officials are convicted, they will also lose their union positions and be forced to pay back some $2 million to the union's insurance funds. Former U.S. Attorney Atlee Wampler called the laborers' union case one of the most important racketeering indictments ever returned in South Florida. But getting convictions could be difficult, especially in a complex trial like this one, which could last four to six months. Jury selection alone is expected to last a week. Robert Gilmartin, Channel 4 News.